Good morning, boys and girls. I am so excited to be with you this morning for Children's Church Animal Tales. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And we're going to get another lesson today from a different animal in the Bible. Last week, we talked about the snake, and we talked about saying no to sin. This week, we're going to learn about a different animal. This is a farm animal. Let's get started with our intro video. Hey everyone, it's me, Emily. Welcome back to this series, Animal Tales. We're learning from some of the coolest animals of the Bible. I've said it before, I love animals. I love all kinds of animals. Now, I'll be honest, some animals are easy to love, like cute little monkeys, sweet little chicks, even fluffy little puppies. And there are other animals that are not so easy to love because they're dirty, stinky, and downright gross. Today, we're learning about one of those animals, the pig. Well, I'm here at the farm with my friend Hayden. Hayden, what do we have here? Well, here we have a whole bunch of pigs. Do you think you can catch one for us? I can try, but they're fast. All right, let's know, do guys. it. I don't know, guys. Wish me luck. That was crazy. Yeah, they're really quick and they always run. So is it true, do, like we hear about, do pigs wallow in the mud? They do because they don't sweat and they get really hot in the summertime, so they have to keep cool. They can swim too. That sounds really gross. So what do they eat? Slop, moldy, old leftovers, anything you can throw at them, they will eat. They're just... <laughs> Not very clean animals. So not anything we would like to eat. Oh, definitely not. You get sick off of it. Oh. So are they really hard to take care of? Yeah, they <coughs> run from you. They always get out. I had one get out and I had to chase it for three hours. Oh my goodness. I never knew they were so fast. Yeah, they can run as fast as deer, dogs, anything else. Wow. Can I try and feed them? Well, you can try. <coughs> Oh, I guess he doesn't like it. It's just not nasty enough. Well, there you have it. Pigs are pretty dirty animals, but today we're learning a pretty important lesson from the pig. It's from the parable of the prodigal son. It's about a young man who left the safety and love of his home. He thought he could have a better life on his own. I won't give away the story, but the son learns a pretty important lesson when he gets stuck in a job feeding pigs. He learns that leaving home is not a good choice. And that is exactly what you're going to learn about in your lesson today. You're going to learn that each of us belong at home, which is in a relationship with our Heavenly Father, God. When we try to live outside of that relationship with God, things definitely don't turn out too well. But the good thing is, with God, you can always come home. This is Emily, and I can't wait until next time when I introduce you to another amazing animal from the Bible on Animal Tales. Boys and girls, I got to go out to um, some friends of mine's home the other day. Um, it was my friend Reese Cunningham. It was her birthday. And when I got to her house, I found a surprise. She and Heath were outside with their new baby goat. It was so cute. They had just fed it a bottle. And um, that goat had a little message for us. Hi, I'm Reese's baby goat. I am so adorable. Or so they tell me. Today we have a Bible lesson about another farm animal, the pig. Yep, it's a story from the Bible about a pig. Let's see what Miss Crystal has to say about that. 
I had no idea that pigs could run that fast. That was hilarious, you guys. Watching that farmer chase those pigs around. Um, in our Bible story day, we're going to talk about someone who was doing some running of their own. Wasn't a farmer, but I want you to stay tuned so you can see. And this, far, this person in our story wasn't running after pigs, but he did end up finding some. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open them to Luke chapter 15. Um, if you don't have them, run and get it. Um, and if you, when you find it, Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11. Our Bible story today is often referred to as the story of the prodigal son. Um, and this is a story that Jesus taught so that people would understand just how much God loves them. Um, and in this story, starting in, in verse 11, we see a father that had two sons. One of his sons, the younger one, one day he came to his father and he said, give me my share of the inheritance. And uh, he, the inheritance was what he was supposed to get when his dad uh, died, but he said, mm -mm, don't want to wait. I want it right now. And uh, the father um, listened to what his son had said, and his son was so sure. He's like, I'm going to be better off on my own. I want my inheritance now. Um, I don't want any, I want to live a life that has no rules and no boundaries and no bedtime and no chores. And he just thought he was going to have this amazing life free from worries. And I'm sure the father uh, was so sad to hear his son ask for this. Um, but he ended up go ahead, going ahead and giving him his inheritance. And his, the son, he left home, he went away, and he went to live on his own. He started partying and drinking, and he was living a sinful lifestyle and doing all these things that were so terrible, that were so different than the way his dad had raised him. And he had lots of friends, but he didn't realize that the only reason he had a lot, of, a lot of friends was that he was the one who had the money. He was the one who was buying all the things. And that's the only reason that his friends were spending time with him. So, unfortunately, it was not very long before the, the, the son had wasted all of his money on sinful, wild living. And he ended up with no money at all. All that money gone. He didn't even have money for anything to eat, so he had to end up getting a job. And the only job he could find was feeding pigs. Can you imagine what a mess it was sloshing around and walking around in that mud and the muck with a bunch of uh, smelly pigs? Um, it's pretty much the worst job that I can imagine he had to find. Now, some people want to tell you, oh, pigs are clean. And it's true, they have to maybe, they do some things that make them look pink. But really, they're eating rotten food. They are eating rotten vegetables. They're living in mud that probably does not smell very good. And that was the only job he could get was to look after um, the pigs. And do you know what? He got so hungry that he began to look at the food of the pigs and think, hmm. This isn't too bad. Maybe I will end up eating some of the uh, pig's food. That's how desperate and how hungry and how horrible his life had become. And so after some time, he started looking around and saying, this is really, this is not the way I want to live my life. And he realized uh, that the pigs were even living better than him. And that was, he didn't want that. And so he thought and he said to himself, you know what? The servants at my father's house are living better than I am. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to beg, 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 beg for my father's forgiveness and ask him if he will at least take me back to be a servant, at least take me back to live as a, a hired hand, and at least I would be better off than eating the food of the pigs. And I'm sure he was really worried that his dad was angry at him and that he would never forgive him. And he probably expected a long lecture from his dad about, I told you. And maybe his dad wouldn't even talk to him at all. But he said, you know what? I'm going to go home. But the amazing, the amazing part of this story is that's not what happened at all. Uh, the father had been watching every single day for his son to come back home. And when he saw him coming up the road, he actually ran to meet his son and he embraced him in a big hug and he threw his arms around him and he kissed his son and he was so happy. He said, I'm going to throw a party to celebrate that my son has come back home. He said to everybody, my son was lost, but now he is found. 
like I said, Jesus told this story because he wanted people to understand how God feels about them. The father in this story actually represents God and the son in this story represents us. And you're like, but Miss Crystal, I've never had to eat pig's food. And that's true. You've probably never had to eat pig's food, but all of us at some time do things that we know we shouldn't. And we, it's almost like we're trying to run away from God and say, God, mm -mm, I, I can do it better. I want to do it my way. I'm going to do what I want to do right now. Um, I don't want to have to tell the truth. I'm just going to tell a lie. I don't want to have to be kind right now. He wasn't kind to me, so I'm going to be mean to him. I'm going to just do it my way. I'm not going to um, live and do what's right for in the way God wants. But God, in this story, he reminds us that he is waiting for us to come home. And he wants us to have a close relationship with him. And even when we mess up, and even when we do those things, we think, oh my goodness, I've already messed up. I can't go back to God. What am I going to do? He's never going to forgive me. Boys and girls, I want you to know that God is always going to forgive you. And he's never turned his back. When the, when the, when the son came back home, his dad wasn't like saying, mm -mm, not going to have, mm -mm, no, you messed up. That's not what he did. When the son came home, he said, come, let me hug you. Let me throw you a party. I'm just happy that you're back home. So boys and girls, I want you to know that even when we do something wrong, God is waiting with open arms to welcome us back home. He's waiting with open arms to forgive us and uh, just celebrate us being back home because our home is truly when we are with him. Who are they calling dirty? I'm not dirty. I've had a bath today. Can you say that? Well, I mean, my bath might have been in mud, but oh well. You know, they say I like to eat nasty things, but my buddy Lane, he takes really good care of me. He and Ethan make sure I eat really good things here on the farm. You know, though, now that I come to think of it, I never see Ethan and Lane eating my food. Hey, maybe my food would be nasty to you humans. Oh well, time for another mud bath. You kiddos enjoy today's lesson. It's not every day you see a talking pig. That pig came from Lane and Ethan Burnham's farm. They have been hard at work taking care of um, their farm and working on the farm. Um, I know Lane's just been working on the tractor, making sure there's enough hay and enough things to feed the animals there on his farm. Lane, Ethan, thank you for sharing your pig with us and thank you for taking good care of him. Hmm, would you want to eat what he eats? I don't think so. Let's see what Skittles has to say. What's up? <laughs> Everybody, it's me. It's the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to say, What's up? Today, we are talking about how you were designed to be with God. So, every time somebody asks you, What's up? you tell them. No matter where you roam, you can always come home. Some people make the mistake of thinking that they would be better off living on their own. They leave their home, which is a relationship with God. See ya. Bye-bye. Gonna live alone. That's crazy. Life without God ain't no life at all. We gotta come to our senses and make our way back on home to God. He will always be there to welcome us home. So anytime, I mean anytime, somebody asks you, what's up, you Tell them. No matter where you roam, you can always come home. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. Today we are learning a lesson from pigs. Can you believe that? Pigs from the Bible. These pigs were found in the parable of the prodigal son 
You've already heard from Miss Crystal in today's Bible story about how a son ran away from home, left his father, partied away all of his father's money. It was a really, really bad situation. He had asked for his inheritance early. That usually, that's not how it's supposed to happen. You don't get your inheritance until after your parents have passed on. But he asked for his inheritance early and then he left the safety of home and the safety of his father's house and he ran away. But the prodigal son didn't just go out and have a good time uh, for the rest of his life. I mean, it wasn't happily ever after, after he left. No, he, he partied away all the money and until he was broke. He had no money to live on. He had no food to eat, no place to sleep. So he went to work um, for a farmer taking care of his pigs. And after a little bit, he started noticing that how bad his life was. I mean, he looked around at the pigs and noticed that the pigs were actually eating and living better than he was. The pigs had a better life than him. There you have it. The pigs taught the prodigal son a big lesson. The pigs reminded him that he had it much better at home with his father and he needed to go back home. You may be wondering, well, what does that mean for us? What is home? Well, our first lesson today is our home. Home is a relationship with God. Our home is this, in this instance, isn't necessarily a place that we sleep at night. It isn't a place where we lay our head or we get food or we're warm. It's not a house with bedrooms and a kitchen and backyard. But instead, it's a place of belonging. <laughs> See, God created each one of us to be in relationship with Him. He created us to follow Him, to worship Him, to be with Him. That's where we belong. Every single person in our world um, can, has the opportunity to come to God and have a relationship with Him. It's the whole reason we were created. But sadly, not everyone believes this. Many people um, may come to God and start living for Him, but then they turn away from God. They turn their back on Him. They, start go they stop going to church and, and they stop obeying the Bible and they stop having anything to do with God. It's like they think that by running away from home, they're run running away from God. You see, sometimes we think we are better off on our own. Sometimes you and I start living for God, and, and then, then we think it's just not worth it anymore. We think, you know what? This living for God has too many rules. There's too many things that we have to do. There's too many things that um, we have to do, and then there's too many things that we can't do that we want to do. I think I'll just leave God and start living on my own. Oh. We start acting like that son in the Bible story, who left his father thinking that he could do it on his own, and he thought he could find happiness and freedom. But after he lived a while on his own, what did he find? Did he find happiness? Did he find freedom? No, he found sadness and loneliness. Sometimes we forget that God, with God, we are safer, we are more blessed, we are more loved than we are ever are without him. He's our heavenly father and he'll help us out. God is so faithful. He is perfect. He'll never mess up. He'll never leave us or turn his back on us. He always loves us. The Bible says that God's love endures forever. It goes on and on and on and never runs out. Many times um, I've driven around town and I, I have seen driving around town like a, a little a little sign. <laughs> have you ever seen those like on, on a, a street sign or a, a post um, light pole or something? You'll see where people have posted signs of a lost dog. This one says, lost dog or a little scruffy has been missing for two weeks. We love scruffy very much and we want him back. If you find Scruffy, please call, and it gives a number there to call. 
you know, um, whoever is missing Scruffy is pretty sad. When I see a flyer like this, I get sad for the family. Um, years ago when I was a child, I lost my dog. Thankfully, we found him, but I, I know what it feels like for that family. I can imagine that family watching and hoping that their dog will come home. I remember as a little girl standing at, at the fence by a road and just crying and watching and praying that my, my dog would come home. You know, I can imagine this family's excitement when they finally find Scruffy. I remember my excitement when my granddaddy brought my dog home to me, when my granddaddy had found my dog. I was so excited. I was so happy. I hugged my dog up and played and played with my puppy dog. I was so excited. You know, um, this family was so happy that someone found their dog. I think how much they worried and hoped that their dog would be found just like I did. And then to know that their dog is safe. Have you ever lost anything very precious to you? Maybe it was your favorite toy or, or a pet or your favorite stuffed animal. How'd you feel? I can imagine you were pretty sad. Now, can you imagine how God feels when we are lost to him? Well, we're not lost. He always knows where we are. But when we run away from him, you know, if ever one of his children leaves home, it breaks his heart to see that we would choose to live on our own far away from him, our Heavenly Father. Just like the father in the story who waited and watched for his son to return, God is waiting and he's watching every day for us. Those of us who may, may turn away and choose to live on our own, he's watching for those people to come home. He wants, God wants his children back with him. Maybe you're here today and you've been trying to do it on your own. You don't, you don't need God's help. You think you, you can do this on your own. You've been living a life maybe of sin, not the way that God wants us to, because you thought you could make it on your own. Maybe you find yourself like that son. Um, you're sad, you're unhappy, you're lonely. You realize that you made a mistake by leaving God's protection and by leaving his plan. I have some very, very good news for you even today. You can always come home. No matter what, you can always come home. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how bad you've messed up, no matter what, always come home to God. God will take you back and he will restore you. And we, your church family, your, your friends who love you that are also Christians will celebrate just like the father did when his son came home. We'll celebrate because you were once lost, but now you're found. You came back home. And I have to say, I really, really, really hope none of you ever, ever, ever decide to try life on your own without God. Hope you never ever say, you know what, this, this life as a Christian is too hard. There's too many rules. I want to do it on my own. I pray that you never decide to leave, live your life like that and leave God. But do know this, God never leaves you. He's just waiting for you to come home to him with open arms. You know, God gives us a chance to come home. We can put him back as number one in our lives. And he's right there ready to bless us and protect us and, and hold on to us just like before. I want us to pray right now for those that maybe, maybe not you, but maybe, maybe there's someone in your life that you know who has left home, left that relationship with God. They, they've turned back on God. Let's pray now that they even will return home. Let's pray. Father God, I pray, Lord, I pray for each child, each adult, anyone watching this lesson today, God. Lord, 
I thank you that no matter what, we can never stray far from you, Lord, that you're there waiting and watching for us to come home. Lord, for those that who have decided to try to make life on their own without God's help, Lord, I pray that you help them turn. Lord, I pray that you help them see how lonely and sad life is, just like the prodigal son was in today's lesson. God, help them turn their lives back to you. God, we praise you for loving us. We praise you for forgiving us and always giving us a place, a home, a relationship with you. We love you, God, and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I've enjoyed being with you today. I want to thank Reese, and I want to thank Lane and Ethan and, and Heath for sharing their animals with us today, their farm animals. And you know what? We don't want to roll around with the pigs. We don't want to live life in a pig pen. We want to come home, and we want to live our life for God. So, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Let's check out our power verse before we end for today. And if you can say today's power verse, send me a video. There might be some candy waiting for you. Have a good day. Good day, mates. It's me, the scripture hunter. I'm out here in the wild doing some hunting, but not just any hunting. I'm hunting for scripture. You know, God's holy word. I know it's around here somewhere. Oh, look, I found it. It's, it's hiding on that animal over there. Looks like I'm gonna have to wrestle him for it. Here I go. Would you look at that? It's a power verse. And the power verse for today is, Christ died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. 1 Peter 3.18. Wow, that was an amazing power verse. Now I need all my girls to stand up with me and say the power verse with the scripture hunter on the count of three. Are you ready girls? One, two, three. Christ died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. 1 Peter 3.18. Great job girls. You sit down, all the boys stand up with me and say the power verse with the scripture hunter on the count of three. Ready boys? One, two, three. Christ died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. 1 Peter 3.18. Great job. You can have a seat. You know, that power verse reminds me of when I gave my life to Jesus. Before I did, I was still a hunter, but not of scriptures, no. I used to hunt the polka-dotted weevil. Everywhere I looked, I searched, and I searched for the polka-dotted weevil. And it was so hard because it lives in the polka-dotted fields. Spots everywhere! But then, I found Jesus. And he changed my life, so much so that all I wanted to do is search for his scripture. And that's what I did. And I love him, and I'm doing it for the rest of my life. So, with that out of the way, everyone stand to your feet, and let's say the power verse one more time. Are you ready? One, two, three. Christ died for sinners, that he might bring us safely home to God. First Peter 3.18. Crikey, that was great. You can have a seat now. Well, kids, looks like that does it for me. I gotta get going and doing what I do best, and that is hunting scripture. So, until next time, if you see a scripture that needs a good hunter, just call on your favorite mate from down under. No matter where you roam, 
you can always come home. So boys and girls, no matter what you've done, no matter if you think you've done something too bad, God will always forgive you. No matter where you roam, you can always come home to God. He's waiting with open arms and he loves you so much. Yoo-hoo! What's up? <laughs> <laughs>